Hi skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com and today we've got another review for you. This is actually a 2019 review. This is the 2019 Blizzard Rustler 11. Um, what's nice about this is the ski doesn't change for next year. Um, it's just a graphics update. It's this uh, pretty bright orange color next year. Um, so pretty cool actually. I, I, I think next year's graphics are, are really cool, very flashy. Um, but I think these skis look great too. That's the Rustler 10 next to it. Um, so, Rustler 11 is an awesome ski. You may remember a few weeks back, um, we sent a pair of the Blizzard Cochis out to um, one of our Chairlift Chat contributors out in Utah, Drew. Um, so we basically did the same thing here with the Rustler 11. Um, you know, it, it's a wide ski. This 188 is 114 underfoot, so it's a big ski. Um, definitely. Definitely you can, you can segment it as a, a true powder ski before we dive into performance. Um, it really is a powder ski. So we thought it was appropriate to send, uh, send it out to Drew, kind of task him with, with reviewing it, putting it to the test out there. Um, and he's been having a blast on it. Uh, I definitely encourage you to head on over to SkiEssentials.com if you're not there already um, and, and read Drew's written review of this ski because it's really cool and he kind of he talks about terrain, different applications, and then how it compares to the Cochis, um, which we'll, we'll get to in this video. Um, so to start uh, the Rustler series in general, hopefully you're aware of them. Um, I think pretty much everybody that, that watches this video is gonna be fairly aware of, of the Rustler line and maybe pretty knowledgeable about them too. Um, but really the, the underlying theme here is, is what Blizzard calls um, carbon flip core DRT um, and that DRT refers to dynamic release of, of your edge um, so really cool construction here and we, we again we've talked about this before um, we've done some Rustler 9 reviews we did a Rustler 10 review kind of when it first came out um, so we've definitely talked about this before um, but basically you get to kind of quickly summarize you get multi-layer wood core so I think it's poplar beach um, polonia and balsa so you get some strong dense dense wood in there um, then you also get the lighter wood to kind of keep weight down this this 188 it's impressively light in my hands um, and then you get this this metal laminate um, that's it, it is different for each each rustler ski so the easiest way to think about it is this metal laminate that, that's full width underfoot um, and then tapers as you reach the tip and tails the metal is longest um, in the Rustler 9 and shortest in the Rustler 11. So a bigger portion of the ski and both the tips and tails in the Rustler 11 doesn't have metal when you compare it to the 10 or, or even the 9, which we don't have the wall on the wall right now. Um, so that's that's fairly important. So you get, you know, you get stability, vibration damping, the, the power of metal underfoot. Um, but as the skis get wider, they're more soft snow oriented. Um, so tips and tails are more focused on maneuverability. Along the same lines, the rocker, the amount of rocker increases as you go wider. Um, so again, the Wrestler 11 has the most rocker. Um, so the most rocker and the least metal um, out of all skis in the Wrestler collection. 
Um, there's also there's unidirectional um, carbon fiber in the tips and tails. Um, that's kind of a really, in my opinion, a really cool concept. Basically, among Blizzard skis, you're either going to see bidirectional carbon fiber or unidirectional carbon fiber. Bidirectional carbon fiber really delivers a lot of torsional stiffness. So, you know, like a, a cross weave of carbon fiber. Unidirectional carbon fiber, on the other hand, it's achieving longitudinal stability, um, but it's not making the tips and tails super torsionally stiff like bidirectional carbon fiber would, which allows, it's again, it's coming back to that dynamic release of your edge. So much easier to really initiate and get out of a turn, um, specifically a carving turn on these skis. So that's kind of the theme behind the Rustler line in, in general. Um, tons of rocker on the Rustler 11. I know we, we mentioned rocker, but that's a long rocker in the tip um, and pretty much the same out of the tail. We see a lot of rocker out of the tail. Um, so, you know, again, I invite you to, to check out Drew's written review of these skis. Um, but really, what these are going to be best for and, and where they're going to be best in a quiver of skis is as a powder ski. Um, and we keep saying that, but they really are, it, it, the, the performance that you're going to get out of this ski is, is definitely best for powder. Um, that tip and tail rocker gives you a ton of float um, and, and also makes the ski really maneuverable. So it's relatively light swing weight. And then you combine that with, with the rocker profile, and it, it's really easy to, to kick your tail edge out, um, which in watching Drew ski it, um, you can kind of see him taking like really direct, direct lines, which is something that I've found in my testing on this ski. Um, you can, because of that rocker profile, because it's pretty easy to kick the tail edge out, um, I find that I'm taking pretty down the fall line, direct lines, pretty aggressive lines. You can point the skis down the fall line and, and pick up some speed, knowing that it's really easy to kind of pivot the ski and, and dump some of that speed if you need to. Um, so that's something that I really like about these skis. Um, they also, considering it's only kind of a partial metal laminate, they stay, um, they stay really stable, especially in softer snow conditions. Um, so even kind of like charging through choppy snow conditions, this was something that Drew mentioned in the written portion of this review, um, he, was, he was finding that they kind of blast through choppy, choppy snow and crud snow really well. Um, if anything, more than he expected after, you know, he, he tested that Cochise and then went to the Rustler 11. And I think it surprised him how much power you still get in the Rustler 11. Um, and that's supported by the fact that you're seeing more and more skiers no, on the Freeride that. World Tour actually choosing the Rustler 11 over the Cochise. Um, kind of dependent on venue. Certain areas are, yeah. are better for the Cochise if it's more open and they're going to be skiing oh, really high speed lines. <laughs> um, but sometimes it's better, again, going back to that ability to kick the tail edge out. Um, it really allows you to do basically anything you want very confidently um, and, and less fatiguing right. too. And that's something that, that Drew mentioned in his article. Um, you don't get those heavy powder day legs on a, on a full day on the Rustler 11 because they're a little bit lighter. Um, so really a fantastic ski um, and, and it really, you know, in my opinion, it rounds out the Rustler collection really nicely. I know this ski existed right off the bat when they introduced the Rustlers and the 9 is really the new one. Um, but I think, you know, the 9 and the 10 um, they feel more like just all mountain skis, where this Rustler 11, you throw it in the collection and it's really kind of like, hey, these are free ride skis. These are free ride powder skis, um, especially when you get up into this 114 category. Um, so, yeah, really cool. Something going back to Free Ride World Tour. Um, you may have seen our footage from, from Outdoor Retailer. Uh, Blizzard Technica kind of went all in with their orange theme for next year. So basically any any kind of pro or athlete level product is going to be orange. So it'll be kind of confusing next year if you're watching Freeride World Tour events. If you see a Blizzard athlete, they're going to be on something orange. It's either going to be the, the Rustler 11 or the Cochise. They're both kind of bright orange. 
Um, I like that. I like that they're kind of giving some, some athlete inspiration or at least paying homage to the fact that these are high-end high -end skis that are, that are skied by some of the best athletes in the world. Um, so definitely, I, I definitely encourage you to, to head on over um, to Chairlift Chat if you're not on that page already. Read Drew's review of these skis. Um, and as always, let us know if you have any questions. It's a, it's a really fun ski, uh, just, just super playful, a lot of energy for a powder ski in the, in the sense that you can kind of hop and play and, and jump around. Um, I have a lot of fun on them. Unfortunately, here in Stowe, we don't, we don't have too, too many days to justify a ski this big. Um, pretty much everybody on the Ski Essentials staff has something this wide in their quiver, um, but we don't take them out too, too often. You really need like a foot of snow or more around here to justify a ski like this. Um, but yeah, let us know if you have any questions about the Rustler 11 or the Rustler series in general. Um, again, they, they get graphics updates for next year, but they, other than that, they're same skis. Um, so yeah, we will see you guys on the slopes. And of course, let us know if you have any questions.